वेलकम बैक टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो इन टूडेज वीडियो आई विल शो यू हाउ टू इंटीग्रेट क्वेरीज एंड म्यूटेशन फॉर ग्राफ क्यू एल इन नेटिव आई ओ एस ऐप विथ स्विफ्ट बाय यूजिंग अपोलो आई ओ एस सो आई हैव दिस क्वेरी विच विल हेल्प अस टू फैच मी अ लिस्ट ऑफ यूजर्स सो इफ आई जस्ट रन दिस क्वेरी हियर यू कैन सी आई एम गेटिंग अ लिस्ट ऑफ ऑल द यूजर्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन साइड माई डेटा बेस ऑल्सो आई हैव वन म्यूटेशन सो दिस विल हेल्प अस टू एड अ न्यू यूजर so here i can add any user which i want to uh, like suppose i add anushka and if i try to run this uh, again you get a list of all the users uh, like i shouldn't uh, like there is an not issue but i think i should have format formatted the output of mutation a little bit properly i am returning list of all the users instead of this single user but i think that's fine now if i try to run my query again you should see anushka over there as well so here you can see so let's see how to do this with uh, apollo kotlin uh, apollo ios as well sorry uh, so first uh, uh, you so it's a little bit tedious like it's not straight forward uh, so let's see how to do this so here i have an uh, i native ios project created with ui kit but if you want you can use swift ui as well and i have written down all the steps for me because even i don't remember all the steps so first we have to um, uh, integrate this apollo ios dependency and i will be using swift package manager but if you want you can use coco pods as well so i'll go to add package dependency i'll just paste the url over here i'll click on add package and it will fetch the apollo ios package for me so here uh, i only need this apollo don't add this apollo dynamic uh, so that's why i'm making this as none also don't add this apollo sqlite i'm not using this because i have tried to use this and i was getting compilation error all over the places and i won't use this as well i only i would only want apollo web socket and apollo that's it then i'll click on add package once you do that uh, let's see what's the next step so we have to okay so i'll go back to my project again we'll have to right click and here you will get this apollo install cli so i'll just click on that i'll click run i'll allow command to change files i'll allow command to access network okay that's done next uh, you will have to uh, open your so we are already done with this so i have my node js server running on localhost colon 4000 slash graphql now we'll have to run this command from first we'll have to cd to your ios project we'll have to run this command so it will uh, create a file for us so i'll go to my project so i'll just do cd dot dot cd i'll just check what is the name of my project my third ios app my third Okay, it's not working. I don't know why. My third. Okay. Next, uh, here you will have to run this command. Uh, so uh, this is already present because we have installed the plugin or the CLI just now by ourselves. And here you can give this name whatever makes sense to for whatever makes sense for your own backend. I'm just giving it as my user API. Rest everything just copy paste as it is. So we'll uh, just uh, run this. We'll just run this command. once you run this command you can go to your project so my third ios app and here you can see we have this file been created apollo dash code gen or uh, dash config dot json so i'll just uh, open this file in vs code okay and next what you will have to do is uh, you will have to copy paste this bit of code to that apollo code gen config json file so i'll just on command this copy it okay and here you will have to go after the out, after the output json object add add a comma and just paste it over here but the changes will which you have to make is this should be your uh, back end uh, back end url so and also make sure your back end is running because it will download the schema for you so i already have my back end running i'll just control s to save it next i'll go back over here and okay then we'll have to run this command so this will help us to fetch the schema for us so i'll just go to my project i'll run this again okay this is done it creates a graphql folder 
so if you go to your project it, it creates a graphql folder with schemas.graphql but if you see inside xcode you can't see that graphql folder so for that what you'll have to do is just create a folder okay so i'll uh, with same name graphql next i'll click on file add uh, just right click on it okay add files to my ios app and i'll go to my over here go to the graphql folder which was created by that command line and i'll select schemas.graphql make sure all this is checked and click add so this is created now we have to create two uh, uh, graphql files uh, uh, one for add user mutation and one for getting our uh, user query so first i'll create those two files so i'll just select file new file and here you can just go down select an empty file so in others you can select an empty file and here i will add add uh, user mutation dot graphql i'll add it and second one i also need one more file new file uh, and over here we'll add next get user query dot graphql okay click create now what i'll do i will just copy paste this query of getting all the users okay and i'll just change this name uh, get user query and i'll also copy the mutation query as well so this is my mutation query i'll copy paste it over here and i'll just rename it as add user mutation okay so this is done uh, so okay we created all this okay next we will have to run this command apollo ios cli generate so i'll go over here i'll run this so what this does is if you go back to your project it creates this folder my user api folder so what we'll have to do is uh, we'll go have to go to xcode select file click add package dependencies click add local and here you will have to select my user api folder click add package then again add package once that is done you will have to go to your uh, project go to build phases go to link bi binaries with i already have this but uh, just to be safe i'll again click on this plus button i'll click again choose my user api and click on add okay once that is done make sure you build your project as well just to be on the safer side that uh, there are no any uh, compile time issues okay see everything seems fine next i will have to create a file called network.swift so i will just create that file file new file uh, network okay and i'll just copy paste this actually we don't need all this code we only need part of it so i'll just copy paste it so we don't need apollo websocket because we are not using that also we don't need this we only need this but make sure you are using your own graphql endpoint of your backend uh, once that is done uh, i'll just copy paste this code from my other repo so i'll show you what exactly it does okay so basically if what we are doing over here we are importing our my users api folder then i have created a table view as well as a text field and a button so i'm for table view we have to write this table view data source as well as delegate here i'm instantiating our table view text field as well as button then i have created an array of strings so my table view will contain a list of all the users which are present inside our a database then here i have just uh, given some styling to our text field as well as ns layout stuff and added it to our sub view similarly for button over here as well as and i, I have added some click listener for our button and similarly for a uh, table view uh, as well uh, okay next here i have so added some ns layout constraints and this should be not first user but this should be uh, get user query 
okay so this is the main part so what we are doing is that we are getting this uh, networks file sh uh, singleton so network dot shared then we have to call this apollo which we have defined over here now this our uh, to get a query uh, uh, to use query we have to call the fetch method of apollo then you can pass whatever query you have so if uh, so if you remember for get user query i have defined it something like this that's why over here i am using it like this then so when you once you get a result uh, here i was i'm just printing the first user but here you will get list of all the users and uh, here i am removing if there are any stale data inside our array i am removing it and then i am just looping over the for loop i am getting every element uh, el elements name and just appending it to our array and i am reloading our table view and here inside add item like when once the button is click i am first checking whether the text field is not empty if not if it is not empty then again i am calling network dot share dot apollo but here you will have to call perform for mutation and just call add user mutation and here i am just passing uh, the name whatever user has entered inside the text field for everything else like this likes movies i have just hard coded this data because uh, i am not really using it and once i get the result uh, again i am uh, checking uh, so if you remember for add user mutation again i was returning all the list list of all the users but i here i, I just want the last user right because i already have the list of all user with the help of graphql query uh, so i'm just getting the last from the array i'm getting its name and then i'm appending it to our data source and then just i'm just instead of reloading the entire table view i'm just reloading the last item where the data was inserted so this is the code for that and these are mandatory methods which you have to override for number of rows in section as well as cell for row at now i'll just run this code so it's still booting So as you can see over here like i have all the data which i have uh, inside my um, get user query now if i try to add one more uh, data uh, like one more name uh, so suppose i add something like vedant and just uh, keep an eye at the bottom i'll click on add and here you should see vedant so yeah uh, that's it uh, that's how you do queries and mutations for native ios app with apollo ios thank you for watching bye